Last week, we told the story of how we acquired our land when I haven't even a pot in which to make tinkle. And from that video, a whole bunch of y'all wanted to hear what happened next. <sighs> So let's talk about it. I wouldn't be able to do this story any justice if I didn't get help with its telling. And that's why I'm bringing in the big guns. My favorite human in the entire world. The woman I have been lucky enough to have this adventure with. The lovely, the talented, the one person on this earth who I know would never say anything to embarrass me in front of all of these people. I don't know. It wasn't really your best era. Meet Carrie. This is gonna be just great. We arrived on the property after 14 straight hours of driving. Our little travel trailer with everything we owned in tow, our two-year-old and our six-month-old, on May 5th, 2012. Middle of the night, there was no moon to speak of. It was pitch black, driving down a dirt road for what felt like forever. When we heard from Carrie's phone, your destination is on the right. We could only hope that the GPS coordinates were correct. So we stop and we just see this wall of juniper trees until we get just into like where there's a little cove we can pull off onto. I'm like, yes, we finally made it. We clear off the bed so that we have a place to sleep. Hit the sack, get some sleep for the night. I didn't sleep a wink. I could hear every little bit of rustling in the brush, every squirrel climbing every tree and every bug with something to say. I hadn't been camping since I was a little kid and I didn't even know if we were actually on our property. I kept thinking if I went to sleep, I was gonna get woken up by a knock at the door by some mountain man with a rifle telling us to get off his land. At some point, I heard a small thud, something crawl under the trailer and then run out the other side. It was rummaging around and it knocked over some of the things that we set outside and I was convinced it was a wolf or a small bear. I was terrified. I had nothing to defend us with save a small aluminum baseball bat. Now I wasn't going to go outside and pick a fight with a bear having only a bat, but if that thing figured out how to open that door, I was going to be ready. Morning came and the sun peeked out over the mountain. I looked out the window and what I could see was absolutely gorgeous. But the only thing I could think to do was to go outside and find the tracks so I could positively identify what it was that I imagined doing battle with all night. Imagine my surprise when I walked outside and found that we had parked over a small game trail and the only tracks that I could find were what I was pretty well convinced was a jackrabbit and a couple of birds. In my defense, they did make a terrible racket. So we arrived and it was beautiful. The wildflowers were in bloom, the mountains were snow covered and gorgeous. So I asked Jason to start a campfire so we could roast some hot dogs, decompress, and start our new life. So I gathered up some rocks, of which there were plenty, and I remember my grandfather had taught me the teepee technique of starting a campfire. I wadded up some paper, took some brush that I had found around, and I made a little like that, some twigs, some small branches, a couple of bigger logs, and I had it perfectly how I remembered my grandpa showing me how. I took out my lighter, I lit the paper on fire, and sat back waiting for it to catch a blaze. You know how they say where there's smoke, there's fire? On this day, I unequivocally proved that that saying is not true. So I'm watching my knight in shining armor. Just, I don't even know what he was doing. Over and over and over and over again to, start this fire and I'm like, this is weird. I, I, I thought he was like, I could do anything. I was so frustrated. Here I was thinking I'm so smart and I could solve any problem and I'm having trouble doing something that my species mastered 100,000 years ago. I was completely out of my depth. I felt totally useless as a man, as a provider, as a protector. I screamed out some of the foulest profanities that I could muster, and somewhere in there, mid-fit, I realized I had something that might actually help with this. So Jason's out there throwing branches, throwing shovels into the woods, and yelling out, cursing the heavens. And I'm like, whoa, who is this person? So I rummaged around in a box of tools that I didn't think was gonna come in handy for some time. And at the bottom of that box, I found a map gas plumbing torch. I walked outside, I lit it up, and I placed the feather of the flame in such a way that I could leave the map gas torch there. And after only 15 minutes 
of the map gas torch sitting directly on the teepee technique pile of wood, the kindling and small twigs dried out enough to catch on fire, which then lit up the rest of the fire. And I remember Carrie walking outside with a pack of hot dogs in one hand, and she put her arm around me and said, good job, lover. I don't really know what else to do other than give him a, you know, go get him tiger and hope next time would be a little bit easier. Now, since then, I have learned dozens of ways to start a campfire. And no matter how many times I do this fairly routine task, warming up next to one, is always satisfying. The song sang around one, the light flickering from flame, the smell of toasted marshmallows. There's just something about a good campfire. But I can say without a doubt that no fire has ever been as satisfying, and I have never in my life had a meal that tastes better than that first set of hot dogs that we roasted on that first fire. Now, I didn't tell this story to suggest that you go off and learn every single way there is to make a campfire before you go off on your adventure. It doesn't really matter what kind of lifestyle you live, because in any one of them, you're going to run into things that you don't know how to do. There's two basic ways you can deal with that situation. You can recoil from it, or you can try, fail, curse the heavens, persist, and push through it. Ours is not a story of learning all of the skills you need to survive in this lifestyle and then going out and doing it exactly like the book says. I told this story to try and convey what in my opinion is the mother of all if we can, you can stories. When I say I had no money, no skills, and about as much sense as the good Lord saw fit to give a pile of rocks, I mean it. But after 12 years of making every mistake and learning every lesson so far, we're still here. We survived. Hell, we even thrived. And no matter what you want out of life, you can too. The couple of months that came after this got wild. But I had to tell you this story to kind of set the tone to show you what it was exactly that we were dealing with. But we'll tell you that story on another day. Hope to see you there. So you can say whatever you want to say. There's no lines. I'll just shut up and sit behind the camera. That is so sweet. You're welcome. And I forgive you.